we took this aside and uh, applied a little bit more of the of the highlight as you can see here because uh, looking back we went a bit too uh, wild with the uh, with the shadows and uh, actually for this step for the brushwork we really need to have a basis that is quite bright just like here so it was just a minor tweak that we did there uh, also you can see already here on the on the back side of the legs this is what we are aiming for um, uh, with the next step and i will show you how to how to get this result uh, on the on the upper part also uh, i think we will paint uh, this shield here and uh, one shoulder piece and maybe also the chest piece here yeah so we have st uh, a small variety of different uh, sizes of armor plates yes. okay so cool it is important to understand that um, the step that we do now is um, is using glazes in order to change the the color or uh, that we have here a bit uh, at the moment it is a blue with some uh, white as a highlight which is a little bit boring you know this i mean it is very classical i would say but uh, it is good to have some kind of impact sometimes in the color to give it more um, variance and more um, yeah to bring it a little bit to life it's really important to add color nuances that change the original tone so you have like a more realistic look in the color so yes. like a realistic aging in the color yes in this case we will use some uh, yellowish glazes and brownish glazes uh, because of, with this we will get a very very nice play of colors as you can see here uh, nearly like a green um, this uh, results from the yellow overlaying that uh, these uh, these surfaces so for here we use uh, as the first step this color here it's called uh, rost effect <laughs> from uh, model mates you could theoretically go and take something like a chestnut ink an old yeah. chestnut ink or a similar ink from for example from Winston newton um, they are all good but this I have to say, I have to admit that I wanted to experiment with it, and this seemed like the perfect uh, time. So, <laughs> so yeah. Uh, actually, it is uh, not acrylic-based uh, color. I think it is uh, flammable. So, and it, it smells uh, pretty nice, actually. <laughs> but yeah, it's got a quite a uh, strong smell. I can even smell it from here. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so uh, that is a color you don't want to lick the brush. Definitely not. Mm -hmm. And if you look, here, if you look here, if you if you look here at the palette, you will see that um, we will apply it very, very, very dil diluted. Um, see it here, like yeah. a like a typical glaze. Uh, not really, not too much. Rather, two thin layers than one thick layer. But the first, very first thing we will put on the surface here is uh, just water. So what I will do now is I will apply a nice layer of water all over the, the surface here. Okay, like this. And now I will take just a tiny little bit of the rust effect and start applying it onto onto that uh, shoulder piece here. Also here, a bit of water. And uh, the rust effect, like this. You can already see how the color has influenced the, the tone of the blue. Now it's a little bit more yellowish, resulting in a somewhat green, uh, yeah, green look. Okay, we allow this to dry. We can uh, blow against this because it's really not uh, not a lot of color. It will uh, you can actually watch it uh, dry sometimes. If you compare the shoulder pad with the uh, main body piece, mm -hmm. it's really nice to see how it uh, changed the color a, a tiny bit. Yes, just a little bit. Also, it uh, changed the the texture of the color. Mm -hmm. It made it a little bit smoother. And it is very important to see that uh, th this step, like this kind of um, glazing in of different tones, it has to be done very, very, very slowly and very subtly. You don't want to, to get too much uh, of the 
of this color in it because it will really uh, look too green. You could do that if you uh, want to, I don't know, to, to paint something that looks a bit corrupted, like, I don't know, maybe a possessed machine or a very, I don't know, greenish attack machine or whatever, but uh, not so much for the blue, it's just really to give it this little, little hint of, of the color here. I will do the same now for the, for the chest piece here, so again, just water here, also on the helmet here. Now we start. Now clean the brush and take some of the of the rust color and apply it here. Yeah, it's a nice trick with uh, by wetting the uh, the surface a bit before you don't have uh, like those. Uh, Hard borders where where the uh, pigments dry. Yeah, the coffee stains. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Because the water um, it goes on the whole surface. Then you you put uh, the color on, for example, down here, and then the I don't know what the the name is. Maybe capillary effect also, but some kind of physical effect draws the color up into the surface. It kind of floats naturally, and then it dries. And this is exactly what we need. You can already see here the little yeah, impact. Yeah, it works That's really nice. Okay, so one more time for the for the upper, uh, yeah, well, back armor, no, head armor piece, or I don't know. Uh, Let's say it? the main armor piece. Yeah. Or the body armor piece. Or... Mm, top armor. And again, the rust effect color, yellowish tint color. Also good to uh, put it down here and clean the brush a bit and then to drag it up towards the uh, the highlight, the white highlight. Yeah, that way you make really sure that most of the pigments gather in the shadow area. Yeah. Yeah, we need to let this dry and I would say this is already enough. Yeah, I don't want to put more in. Uh, in the legs, uh, we have a bit more of the yellow, but that's because uh, down here it might get uh, he might get a bit more dirty, and up there we don't need that awful lot of uh, of the yellow. Yeah, also it pull, pulls a little bit more attention to the brighter blue parts in the upper upper part of the armor. Yes, the next step would be to use some uh, tank brown from Model Air Color. Uh, it's a very nice color that uh, dries out. Uh, with a with a shine, as you can see here, it's not um, entirely flat, which really really makes it a good color to um, enhance um, deep structures. Also, it gives in a little bit of red to the to the whole um, surface. So this is something we want to have. Yeah. Also, the the contrast with the blue is quite strong, so uh, it will get a nice result mm -hmm. in no time. I think I will demonstrate it uh, here, this uh, part here, best. Um, in order to, to build up the, the contrast a bit more, um, we will place it below this shoulder here and a little bit here under this ring, but not too much. And we take a little bit of it and place it, place it uh, just um, in these um, yeah, like crevices or what you might call them. Oops. Uh, in the dark shadow areas. Yes. And then we do this a similar thing as we did before. We clean the brush quickly and then we drag um, we drag the color up to, to uh, like towards the the, uh, the highlights, but not too much. Just a little bit. Mm -hmm. To increase the, the shadow here. Like that. Yeah, we have to be careful with this though, um, not to overdo it. This is really like, it should be a darker area within the the color that we have placed uh, there before, the rust color. So for example, here again, uh, just take some water, place it along down here, the edge, and underneath this swan here, it's actually a swan symbol of uh, Signa. And then just put it 
to the shadow, clean the brush, and help it help it find its way. <laughs> a little bit like guiding it a little bit up. Yeah, maybe here I just noticed that it could be a bit higher and that the highlight, the very, very high highlight should be rather in this area here. So I pulled it up just a little bit like this. You see that uh, very quickly you can get, a, you can increase the contrast of these surfaces and uh, yeah, really start to build up something more plastic, uh, that is more... 3D. Three, yeah. three dimensional. Yeah, actually, all the time you paint a model, it's quite amazing. Once you've added a, a second color uh, to the main color, here the, the red or brown tones uh, to the blue, it really helps to look, uh, to make the original color look more blue somehow, mm -hmm. or some, some more intense, or way more believable than before. If you compare it the, for, for example, the arm with the sword. And the upper part of the uh, the plate, it's like it's a really huge difference. Mm -hmm. And also here on the chest piece, I think in this case I will apply one more um, layer of the yellowish uh, of the of the rust color because it's a bit uh, lower also, and it's not not enough here. So very quickly. You can see how the contrast really uh, is increased a lot by this. Yep. And let's not forget about the helmet, which is also the face of this uh, creature <laughs> or machine. And it will be important uh, to keep the right brightness here. Actually, the, the focal point should be the, the head, I think, eventually. So we'll work on that a bit later. Yes. And you can see the again like the contrast really build up. Really. Okay, and uh, again with the tank brown, we will very, very carefully apply just a little bit of it here in some of the lower parts that are in the deep shadow. Really nice. I think it's uh, the chest piece is a uh, is a good example uh, of the advantage of uh, the airbrush priming because you have that round, nice highlight, and you just emphasize the shadows, and it looks so natural. Mm -hmm. Really nice. You you see that the this top part here is a bit darker actually than this, uh, which was not necessarily intended, but when something like this happens, you can try to correct it by either taking some of the uh, of the highlight color that you still have in your cup and uh, just gently for example putting it down and uh, trying to yeah to highlight it up again or you could do the same thing with some scratches that you know on the top there will be more more scratches um, yeah it, but I think it will be fine in the end. We will just uh, just continue doing that. Okay. As for the next step, we would like to um, to paint on some subtle battle damage, uh, similar to the cracks that you see here, the black uh, chippings here. Mm -hmm. 
Before this, we will mix some <coughs> Chaos Black with the Tank Brown. We quickly switch the brush also for this. The smaller size of your, of your brush will help you to work more uh, fine. Yeah, and this we apply at places where we think uh, that would be um, exposed to, to some damage. Yeah, it's important to, to place the sh uh, shipping at, uh, at spots where it would occur naturally, so around the edges and on the borders. Yes. Yeah, you can see Matt is not really like pulling a, a line, more stippling around the, the edge. Yeah, trying to, yeah, to create little, um, yeah, well, little little situations, or little, tell a little story with, uh, with this. It's very simple, actually. It's a very quick uh, technique. And it looks uh, most of the time looks pretty good, but you have to um, to be very um, precise about this, and uh, not only, for example, now cover this, but be very strict and patient. Actually, also here, it's uh, it can be there can be too much of that. <laughs> if I decide to le leave it as a uh, blue um, armor, it's yeah, good. that's good like that. You see, I, I hold the brush sideways and um, then let it wander along the edge. Yeah, I just touched the surface a little with the side of the brush. Nearly by itself. So this will be a bit hard to reach, but let's try. And when you make a little mistake, you take a, your gypsy brush. For those who don't know what it is, it's actually a brush like this with very, very short bristles. And you can go in and kind of correct uh, certain mistakes that you might have done. You just rub them off. like It's a bit like an eraser. Yes. I think you get the... Get the idea what to do. Mm -hmm. You do this. Will you also add some uh, little scratches over the surface of the, for example, the shoulder pad, or will you more or less leave it like that? No, no. I think uh, I will do this uh, now also as a next step. Um, designate a couple of, of little scratches, as you can see here on the on the leg. Uh, I mean, not too many because uh, really less is more in yeah. this case. Um, so just some. For example, uh, like here, you can also see it. It is very, very subtle. Uh, these little, little, uh, even whiter highlights here. Yeah. But it really helps to just create something that is of interest for the eye there. And uh, yeah, these will come come next. But I think I will continue to to put on yeah. some more black scratches here. Yeah, also. You, can, you can, I think, uh, people got, got the idea. Mm -hmm. So we can continue with that off cam because it's a step that can take quite a while. Mm -hmm. Um, and we'll be back once that step is completed. Okay. Ta-da! Big changes! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, indeed. One thing that became uh, very apparent and important was um, that the elements that were yet painted blue uh, or had the foundation on, like uh, the base, they were very distracting. And um, it, was very, it is very important uh, with a big uh, scale miniature like that to um, to see the elements um, more in segments and to treat the, to start painting them in segments and um, that's why we had to block out all the and the parts that uh, will eventually become a different color than the blue um, we have to we had to cover uh, to, to cover them up with a color that is a bit more neutral on the eye than uh, than the blue. It's also good to mention that it's better to take a dark color for that, so you have like the maximum contrast for mm -hmm. the blocking. Yes, and for this I uh, like to use uh, the P3 Umbra Umbra. It is a very nice color, something in between um, a brown and a gray and the black, uh, and it really gives a good uh, foundation for everything that comes after that. Um, but besides that, we, we didn't uh, do a lot differently until now. Um, 
there are some parts that have uh, that have also processed like this uh, progress like this uh, this arm but i will show you exactly uh, on how to get to this uh, point on um, on the shoulder piece and on the top piece here that we have not yet covered uh, also a thing that is differently is that we um, we finished um, these uh, the shoulder pieces here and uh, this is because we have actually shown you how to paint black armor in an earlier video in the Horus uh, video that Ben has uh, yeah. has been painting so we we, we didn't want to repeat that so there will be uh, a link in the um, down below that you can click if you want to know how to paint the black uh, armor part here so right after uh, applying some of the uh, the rust effect and um, working a bit on the on the contrast and then adding these little uh, black chips here it is good to have a look on the overall contrast of uh, of the of the piece that we are about to to paint and as i said before it's good to work in segments we should increase the uh, the contrast here a bit more shadow in mm -hmm. these parts down here and uh, also we will add a little bit of light and little scratches much like on um, on the shoulder piece maybe you can see it um, with these little um, yeah, yeah well, a little little texture really helps to get rid of that strong airbrush look and yes, yes. also really it, it's really nice to break up the surface so yeah as you can see here on the palette cam we still have the uh, reservoir of the of the medium color we take some of that um, we have some black here a little bit of the brown also here the tank brown that is and with this we mix a color that is uh, slightly slightly darker than the the medium tone like this and we will apply it uh, as a glaze here so again we first uh, put on a little bit of water here And now start to add the shadow like this very subtly. And you can really build up more contrast uh, that way. Gradually, you don't uh, have to put on an awful lot, mm -hmm. as the color will set there. Um, it will do like overlays of of different uh, of the tones, and then become um, darker and darker the more often you uh, repeat this. As you can see on parts like this here, uh, here I'm not so sure if you can see it on the monitor, but uh, this part is even even deeper, is in a deeper blue than uh, the blue that is up here, and this is because I added a little bit of uh, of a purple ink there. Mm -hmm. The purple really helps also to to give a nice contrast to the slightly well greenish parts of <laughs> what we yeah. did with the with the rust effect, and therefore create some uh, extra deep um, look. So we will do this too. So again. We take some water and put it on the surface. And we have to dilute the, the purple. The purple ink is really intense. You don't want this to look like a lollipop eventually. Yeah, yeah definitely, um, because uh, the ink is also uh, quite satin. In the finish so mm -hmm. in the end if it wouldn't uh, would end up like a <laughs> grape lollipop shoulder pad that would be quite terrible at that stage yeah it would be a bit. you can also um, take some of the of the shadow color that uh, with the medium tone that we have mixed uh, before and um, Mix it with a little bit of the of the purple ink to create a very very deep color. And for some parts, um, that might be very good. For example, 
here. Yeah, just on the lower side of that edge. Yeah. It really helped to build even more contrast there and while while keeping the, the color of the of the of the armor. The next step is to build up the highlights again. So you're now aiming for a more textured highlight, not as smooth as the average one. Yes. And for this, we take some of the, the highlight color that we still have in the cup, hopefully. <laughs> Pretty light. You can do it in little scratches. Uh, but for this, the, the color should not differentiate so much from the, from the tone that you are painting on. So um, yeah, it should be more or less the, the same in the area around it. Is otherwise, if the contrast is too strong, uh, it looks too hard. Yeah. So yeah, it's a combination of uh, dabbing on a little texture and then glazing over it to, to get a nice deep look. No, I'm not licking the brush. <laughs> I actually try not to do it, but uh, spending so much time with Ben, uh, <laughs> it's... <laughs> Sorry, I have to agree. <laughs> you, you can't help it. Yeah. Okay, and uh, also here on the on the arm, on the shoulder. So yeah, I uh, limit the the step only to a little area in the already uh, light highlight here. So before the highlight was from I would say here to here, and now in this there are like these little imperfections that uh, yeah help to break it out uh, uh, to break it apart. No, <laughs> to yeah, help to break up the surface. Yes. Yeah, I think it's it's also uh, really nice uh, because this way you keep the nice transition in the in the mid tones uh, from the airbrush, uh, but you still get a texture feel for the for the whole surface. Yeah, so it's the best of both. <laughs> in addition to these um, to these highlights that are very subtle, it's important to um, to be kind of precise or strict about the other highlights that would usually occur. For example, there are some uh, holes here. Mm -hmm. They would need a little highlight you know, because they're so small. And that's why we will put a little, um, little edge. A uh, small edge highlight on the lower edge. Because, uh, that edge would just catch a tiny bit of light. Yeah. And because it's so dark there, they will really come uh, and draw more attention. Yeah, like it, really nice. It's a very small thing, but but with this, I break up the this whole surface, and something of interest is is there, like uh, similar to to this here. Mm -hmm. and now I switch to the even finer brush because uh, I think I, I would like to add one or two very very little uh, scratches uh, here with a. Very bright color. Yeah, and um, at this point, it's also good to take a step back and uh, have a look again. Sometimes you will find that uh, some surfaces would benefit of more highlights, like uh, maybe here around the emblem of the swan, and uh, here needs more work. Um, so yeah, we do the same uh, as we did before. We add a little bit of the highlight color and then we just dab, uh, dab it on. 
in this in these areas. Okay, so there's only one uh, little more thing to do. Mm. Generally speaking, your um, armor will look very beaten um, or can look very beaten uh, when you don't limit the amount of, um, of these little scratches that you do. For example, down here, it's quite, uh, quite a lot. <laughs> You know, because you have in the end you have like three steps uh, that can that you can add uh, damage. First off, with the with the rust effect, uh, it will look uh, more like oily because of that. Then with obviously these little chippings that occur on the on the edge. Um, then with these little white highlights that you put in everywhere on the on the surface. And uh, now we even do one thing that we should. Uh, be very uh, that we should not use uh, very excessively it is uh, something that you see maybe here in the shadow it's uh, very 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 hard to see but it's something like a I don't know a little rust effect yeah, it's like, like leaking rust effect mm -hmm. uh, not too much because uh, you, you really got to be careful otherwise the uh, the logic will look straight from the junkyard yeah so just do it in one or two uh, places mm -hmm. that, that should be enough you can see on the palette for this we use uh, some vermin brown that we uh, toned down a little bit with with, uh, with a dark color. I think we will add a tiny little bit on this uh, edge down here. Uh, it will look a bit like maybe some gathered uh, humidity. Just something that will break down this very very big uh, surface. So for this we take it uh, with a cut and a brush, quite diluted. And then we just place it here. And drag it up a little bit. Yeah, with the clean brush again. Yeah, if you want it to, to be like a very dry, very strong um, rust, you can also use vermin brown directly. Um, but it's very orange, so you've got to be a little careful. If I paint like r little rust streaks that are running down, I, I like to, to take the pure vermin brown. Here underneath these uh, screws, there would definitely also be some some rust. Yeah. So just a tiny little bit. Don't overdo it. That should already yeah, be yeah. enough. Really nice. Yeah. And uh, yeah, well, if you are want to go the extra mile, you can even take a little bit white into that and just uh, place it there also. Yeah. So, but. That's it, really, you should not overdo it. And if you overdo it, you can use the gypsy brush to kind of scrap it off. I think you know how to do it now. Uh, I think you can also, uh, you also know how to, um, how to adjust that technique to create something more greenish, more beaten. Um, yeah, it yeah, is up to your personal taste. Yeah, yeah definitely. And I think it's uh, a really nice thing about the this uh, chapter is, that you can really see how easy you can alt, uh, alter a, a color that you maybe don't like and just change it with a few glazes to, to make your uh, project benefit from that. Mm -hmm. Yes, definitely. The next portion of the of the armor part will be uh, the white. This part here will be will be white. Also, um, this uh, these these shields here, and also the kneecaps. Mm -hmm. We will paint them also white. Okay, nice. Okay.